Hello chess friends and welcome to Zaros chess channel and welcome to my basics in chess series. So in this series we follow opening principles, middle game strategies and the end game strategies. Today we continue with some uh, middle game strategies and today we talk about uh, dynamic positions. So the dynamic position is really uh, an often position that you can play in the middle game and that's why I think this is really an important video for you to watch in order uh, to get a better understanding about these types of variations and about these types of positions and also in order to get a better understanding of this particular video you should also watch my open center uh, middle game video in which I show you how I should handle open center positions so these um, two videos are similar uh, and uh, I'll send you this open center video link at the end of this particular video so you can watch them combined and have a better understanding about dynamic and open center positions so uh, what to say about dynamic positions first of all uh, one player always likes the dynamic the other doesn't it means uh, when we are playing dynamic positions one player has maybe a slight advantage because he has a better uh, piece activity and he wants to keep the position really in this dynamic shape on the other hand this uh, player that's maybe a little bit passive he would love to, uh, the position to change he would love to maybe get a static position and then uh, try to liberate himself and play much more active with his own pieces so uh, but uh, when you, when that happens to you when you have an open position when you have maybe a dynamic position you should follow basically one particular rule it means that you should really place your pieces towards the center as much as you can as uh, central as possible or try to attack the center with uh, with your own pieces so it means you should place your bishops maybe really in the center or attack the center with your bishops place the knights towards the center play the rooks towards the center you have really sort of a compact position in the center and you should really occupy the four central squares um, how to play when you don't like uh, the dynamics it means that you should really try to change the dynamics we want as i said uh, to create static positions so this uh, i'll show you uh, some examples of the so-called provocative move the provocative move is a move in which you're forcing your opponent to do something attack you uh, maybe he gets a tempo but then the dynamics of the game will change but i'll show you in a couple of examples this particular this particular uh, thing so uh, what is uh, how to play when you like the dynamics when you like the dynamics you want to keep the dynamics uh, get the use of your uh, maybe piece activity uh, maybe get the use of your uh, central pawn, uh, pawn storm that you can create but when you have maybe uh, sometimes to change the the, uh, the dynamics of the game it has to mean something it means that uh, your changing of the dynamics uh, will create another uh, strategical element uh, maybe another strategical uh, advantage but uh, it will be also much more explained uh, through this video so let's see now this uh, dynamic position so first of all uh, you see we have now the common king's indian and we it's really now already a dynamic position you see we have sort of a, a tension here in the center between the two of uh, two pawns here on d4 and e5 so from white's perspective um, white would love to, for you to play something like uh, e takes d4 and then after knight takes on d4 we have still um, a dynamic position because uh, the mobility of uh, this pawn is still possible maybe white can try also some f4 moves and will cre create sort of a pawn storm uh, I'm not saying that uh, you lose the game immediately if you play such variations, but I wanted to show you here after castling. Now the main main idea is to play this move knight on c6, although it's still common theory in the King's Indian, uh, and you basically know this moves by heart. But it's not the point here. Here after knight on c6, we are really challenging now the dynamics in the game. So in the main line of the king's indian your opponent will play the move d5 and here after knight on e7 we are still in, in in the common line of the king's indian but you see now the dynamics of the game has changed so you see uh, we have now a static center position and that's why this knight on c6 move was really important because it was a provocative move it was challenging white center so that's why after d5 now suddenly the dynamics has changed and that's good for us so because we didn't like this dynamics that white had created so now after this move knight on e7 uh, we have now the so-called blocked uh, center position which black will coordinate the attack uh, on the king's side because you see the spawns are showing us the direction of the attack and from white's perspective you see uh, uh, white will coordinate the attack 
on the queen side because we have now this e4 and d5 pawn which are really also showing us the direction of the attack now uh, as i said uh, when white uh, well let's watch this position from white's position when we uh, as i mentioned change the dynamics in the game at, le at least uh, we should try to get another uh, positional advantage from white's perspective you see we have now at least this of uh, pawn on the, on the fifth uh, on the fifth rank so it means we have created sort of a space advantage so nothing lost for both sides but i wanted to point you out that really here the dynamics of the game has changed and that's very important also for black because black has this standard attack uh, here with the move f5 f4 and similar ideas white on the other hand has some b4 c5 possibilities so let's see now also this uh, position in the french defense uh, here after knight to c3 you see one of the uh, standard moves is also this provocative move knight to f6 as i said although we know this uh, particular lines by heart but it's not the point here after knight on f6 even if you would know uh, the theory uh, in this opening this knight on f6 is really a natural move because we don't like the dynamics let's for instance imagine the position after d takes e4 here after knight takes on e4 i'm not seeing good uh, good moves here after knight on f6 you see uh, this this knight um, knight on uh, e4 can be protected maybe with bishop on d3 and still we have a very very nice dynamic position okay we have of course to play c3 and similar ideas but uh, this is really really not a good position for 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 black because white can in some occasions also try c4 and d5 creating a really nice central pawn storm so that's why here the most natural move is to play knight on f6 after e5 okay white has again the space advantage but here after knight on d7 the dynamics has changed again uh, now it's a different way we'll uh, from black's perspective we'll coordinate our attack on the queen side of course white will coordinate his attack on the king side because his pawns are directed to the king side so uh, here i wanted to show you one of my games um, it was against the 2300 rated player and uh, here we have a really dynamic dynamic position so as i said when we have dynamic positions in the center you should follow this basic rule to uh, place your pieces towards the center or try to attack the center so it's really important even if you don't know maybe the particular opening line the next move come come really to you uh, as simply uh, because you just follow this basic rule uh, here uh, in the game i played bishop on c4 it comes with the idea to attack the center or place the piece towards the center so i'm not playing something like bishop on e2 i'm attacking already the center because we have as, as i mentioned a dynamic position here bishop on e7 castling castling and now queen on e2 you see again towards towards the center we want to compact uh to have a compact position but i never i will never uh uh, play the move d5 because the d5 move uh, changes the dynamics of the game or i will not take the pawn here on e5 because it also changes the direction of uh, the, the dynamics of the game and uh, this is now simplified position and that's uh, what i don't like so that's why queen on e2 keeping the dynamics because black would love uh, to uh, me to play something like d5 or uh, d takes e5 but here I wanted to stay with the dynamic position because, first of all, as I mentioned, I have a better piece activity, I have a better bishop, uh, and I have a really, really a dynamic, uh, a dynamic game. So here c6, uh, uh, rook on d1 was played by me. So you see, I wanted also uh, to create uh, some dangerous attacks against the uh, black queen. But again, it meets with the idea to play with the pieces, as I mentioned, as central as possible or uh, attack the center so uh, even if the queen would have been on c7 i would still play uh, the move uh, rook on d1 because it meets with this idea to play in this dynamic positions here queen on c7 now played a4 uh, preventing this b5 ideas and now my opponent right um a6 i played simply uh, a5 you see not allowing uh, some pawn breakthroughs here or simplifications um, on the queen side but uh, of course i want to play something like bishop on e3 also because again it meets with the idea to play towards the center but uh, i cannot play immediately uh, bishop on e3 because knight on g4 can be played and i don't want to play immediately the move h3 because uh, 
first of all i play this delaying moves a little bit and wait uh wait black something to do because he has troubles to develop you see he has uh here uh this bad pieces the bishop on c8 and the knight on d7 of course uh you see uh black can take in some occasions the pawn on d4 and after knight on d4 now still we have a dynamic position but now i have improved the position of my knight and uh, i'm now even satisfied with this game after knight on c5 uh, i can play f3 and then bishop on e3 again uh, towards the center again play uh, with the pieces as central as possible or attack the center as i mentioned so here uh, in in this game uh, my opponent played rook on d8 and he made a mistake you see how uh, how dangerous the dynamic positions can get here i have a very nice sacrifice bishop on f7 queen takes on f7 f like simply queen on c4 my opponent tried to close the position but now uh, e takes d5 with the preparation to play a discovered attack uh, with an attack on the queen you see he took uh, with the knight the knight takes on d5 but you see you cannot take because i have also a very nice pin by the queen on on black queen so that's why here queen on uh, queen on d6 was played and now i played knight on f6 creating a discovered attack you see uh, my opponent took and now i have this very very nice check uh, you have to take and in this position uh, my opponent resigned because he lost the queen eventually so you see the dynamic position is really uh, sometimes uh, easy to follow if you just follow this principle of uh, getting getting the pieces towards the center or attack the center so here is also a position uh, one of my games uh, here we have a dynamic position but i'm not satisfied with this dynamics i want the position to get static uh, that's why i played first the small bishop on b4 because the bishop uh, is attacking the knight it's sort of an indirect attack against the center because uh, the knight is attacking the center so this bishop on b4 with the pinning idea against white king uh, is also sort of a centralization move it attacks the knight as i said which uh, controls the center castling and i played knight on knight on d7 here my opponent took uh, and now finally played bishop on c3 we have bishop takes on c3 and now knight on d5 because you see i want to pos the position to be static uh, here uh, bishop on b2 was played now rook on e8 again i'm pointing you out because we have really uh, the possibilities here in the center maybe e4 is possible uh, white would love to play the move e4 or some other ideas or maybe place the knight on e5 that's why i play first towards the center as i said for uh, or attack the center that are the main ideas of this open center or this uh, dynamic games rook on e1 was played and now queen on f f6 again with the idea to control the center with the pieces so rook on c1 rook on d8 again towards the center so nothing special i think uh, this this uh, this moves are really uh, easy for me i'm not i don't have to calculate so much i just follow uh, the, the the principle here of this piece centralization queen on c2 rook on e6 again i point you out towards the center uh, a3 now again rook on e8 again uh, a move that attacks the center so in the continuation b4 was played you see white wants to position to get dynamic because he has the bishop which is a little bit blocked out by its own pawn so he would love to play much more active with the bishop now played f4 uh, you see because i have now um, the pieces as central as possible so that's why i would love now to position to get dynamic now when i have a good piece activity now it's time to change the dynamics again now it's time to get again dynamic position here e4 was played i play queen on g6 creating a pin against the queen we have a knight on uh, knight on a4 but i simply took you cannot take because you get checkmated uh, that's why my opponent uh, here tried uh, try to play rook for me to d1 and now find uh found a good tactic here rook from uh rook on e1 with the check check and now after rook on e1 i could simply take the queen here after uh, rook on e8 knight, knight on f8 and you see uh, in this position my opponent resigned but that was all possible because i played on this very very uh, nice central setup here rook on e6 and here rook on e8 you see how um i like now the position to be dynamic because i have the pieces on the best best square so uh here uh, it's a game also i wanted to show you 
on uh, my games because uh, I can explain you this uh, uh, this dynamics much much better I think through my games here again we have a dynamic position so uh, here you can maybe uh, start to panic what should I do oh, he's attacking the center he we have a dynamics you should just follow uh, the principle of peace centralization or attacking the center here I played simply knight on e5 although uh it's again it's still common theory but you don't have to uh, study the theory so much if you just follow uh, follow this basic principles after knight on e5 you see it meets with the idea to attack the center in the in in the in the game uh, knight on uh, knight on d7 was played and again i didn't want to have double pawns so again i played knight on d3 a p centralization and now we have uh, c takes d4 and now i find i i played knight on b4 you see, uh, if takes, uh, if uh, my opponent would have taken the bishop, then I have bishop on b4, and uh, black would uh, have many, many troubles to castle, because he would lose the dark square bishop in an early stage of the game, so that's why he played first uh, bishop on b7, he didn't want to also to lose this his light square bishop, and now we have b takes c4, we have castling, castling by me also, queen queen on c7 and now i played knight on d3 we have uh, bishop on a6 again knight on d7 we see again we have a dynamic position now i have all of my pieces as central as possible uh, and this bishop as i said is attacking the center please keep that in mind why are you playing this dynamic position so it's the most important rule as central as possible with the pieces and attacking the center so here uh, you see with uh, with this three of, uh, three mining pieces in the center and the bishop which is attacking the center i have now a perfect a perfect harmony b between the pieces so uh, rook on d8 uh, played my opponent now my opponent is trying this idea to get uh, the center fixed somehow because he doesn't like this advan ad advanced pawns that i have here on c4 and d4 and i simply continue to push in the center here knight on f8 queen on c2 we have knight on d7 we have rook on d1 again i'm pointing you out i'm playing as central as possible now it's it, this will be a little bit a delaying move rook on d1 and here we have rook on c8 and now a4 attacking uh, here trying maybe to open the position through through a file because i have a powerful uh, center so that's why i'm trying to open the position on, on the flank so uh, knight on g6 we have we have we have a5 we have b5 and now comes this move c5 this is now again a little bit changing uh change changing the dynamics of the game as i said we should change the dynamics if uh, we manage to create another positional advantage so although the position is not dynamic anymore not so much dynamics we have here uh here after the c5 move i have really a nice space advantage and i have blocked out really his bishop on a6 so uh although i didn't i don't have any more the pawn flexibility here but at least this bishop is out of game so after uh bishop on b7 i played even mo the move e5 and now you see his pieces are all paralyzed the dynamic has changed here uh, it's uh, of course worth to mention i cannot play anymore some d5 moves so d6 move to create a pawn breakthrough but uh, i have uh, created this uh, positional advantage positional space advantage and now all of these pieces are paralyzed i'm not going to, to show you the whole game it's not the point here i just wanted to show you the rules of dynamics position so here is a game uh, played by uh, Leonid Stein against Vasily Smyslov and uh, here you sh we have really a dynamic positions and uh, I wanted to pause the video and tr try to find the best move to try to choose between uh, queen on d5 or queen on h5 so if we follow the rules of dynamics of course the next move is queen on d5 because we want to play as central as possible as in the dynamic position so uh, you see we if we play queen on h5 again we have attacked the f7 pawn but here uh, with queen on d5 uh, we have now the, the queen centralized we have still maybe some attacks against the rook on a8 so you see it's not the same if we play uh, queen on h5 or queen on d5 in the continuation here uh, smyslov played rook on f8 we have uh, c takes uh, d4 and now rook on c8 we have rook on d1 again i'm pointing you out uh, white is playing towards the center with the pieces in dynamic positions 
so I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself but it's really important uh, here in this in these types of variations so Queen on e7 again uh, Bishop on g2 you see we're attacking now the center uh, or play towards the center Rook on b8 and now Queen on uh, b7 Rook takes on c4 was played we have uh, d takes e5 and Queen takes on e5 and King on f1 now the threat is also to play something like Rook on e1 in the continuation Queen on b5 was played trying to get the discovered attack but now King on h1 getting out of this uh, potential discovered attacks by the Queen Queen on c6 we have Queen takes on c6 Rook takes on c6 and it seems that you cannot take uh, uh, the, the, the rook on uh, c6 because of course we have now a powerful pin uh, here by the rook but here rook on uh, rook on uh, a uh, a8 h8 was played very nice move if you take then of course we have uh, bishop on c6 and you cannot protect anymore this uh, d7 knight so that's why rook on g6 was played we have uh, F takes g6, rook, uh, rook takes on h8, but again, bishop on c6, rook on g8, here bishop takes on e7, we have uh, king on e7, but now bishop on f5, uh, f takes g6, and again, it's not a problem here in the continuation, in this position, uh, black resign. <coughs> so, let's see now another example. One of the best chess players in dynamic positions was really Gary Kasparov. He understood the dynamic positions, I think, really the best uh, maybe even in chess history uh, here after the move d6 uh, most of us would try something i don't know like knight on c3 bishop on b2 but you see with uh, with the next move rook on d1 you see uh gary kasparov is following this basic rule of this uh, dynamic position to get the pieces towards the center or attack the center and it comes also with the discovered attack by the rook against the queen so knight on d7 now bishop on h8 uh, h6 uh, preventing uh, of course black uh, to castling here uh, knight takes on e5 was played knight takes and knight takes on e5 and now knight on c3 again with the idea to play towards the center we have f6 now c5 here knight on f7 we have uh, c takes uh, d6 uh, if you try bishop or, uh, pardon me if you try bishop on d6 here then we have bishop on uh, b5 if you try c6 then bishop on f4 is very dangerous if you take then we can simply take <coughs> take the bishop on d6 and it would be a completely winning position here for white so that's why uh, c takes d6 was played now we have queen on e3 knight takes on h6 uh, it seems that uh, uh, black can defend here after queen on h6 we have bishop on f8 but now queen on e3 king on f7 if you try queen on e7 then knight on uh, queen on f3 is very dangerous after king on f7 we have knight on d5 is very very dangerous with also some possibilities to jump on c7 and also here uh, bishop on c4 so uh, in the game after queen on e3 king on f7 was played and now knight on d5 by kasparov we have bishop on e6 knight on f4 attacking the bishop we have queen on e7 and now rook on e1 and in this position uh, black resigned uh, it was uh, Vishwanathan Anand it was unbelievable in this position in, in the game Gary Kasparov Anand uh, Anand resigned because in the continuation you see black can try maybe uh, to play something like rook on e8 but now after uh, uh, knight takes on e6 we have queen on e6 queen uh, takes on e6 if you take with the king then we have bishop on c4 very dangerous and if you go with the king here then bishop on b5 and you lose the rook so you see how important it was uh, in in the uh, starting position for gary kasparov to play s as central as possible with the pieces and he got now a very very nice attack against also former world champion vishwanathan Anand. so let's see now another game by gary kasparov if you want to have a better understanding about dynamic positions you can just watch uh, gary kasparov games He's really, as I said, one of the best dynamic uh, players in chess history. Uh, here in the continuation, we have now this um, so-called Samish attack against the King's Indian. Uh, and now we have again a dynamic position. Here, c6 was played, queen on d2. By This was a game played by Anatoly Karpov, also a former world champion. So the rivalry uh, uh, between Anatoly Karpov and uh, Gary Kasparov, I think, is a well-known thing in, in, in chess history. Here is the queen on d2. Here, Kasparov plays on the simple idea to have this uh, uh, piece centralization to get a comp compact uh, position with his pieces towards the center. And what black would love to is uh, why to play 
uh, the move d5 because it changes uh, the dynamics of the game we can then pass through and then we have a block position then we know that uh, that we should maybe uh, coordinate the attack again with knight on h5 and similar ideas f5 f4 uh, to tr try this uh, common king indian uh, king indian setup so uh, in this position you see uh, white would have also troubles uh, because he has now a very very bad knight he would have to play something like knight on g3 or knight on c1 in order to liberate his likes for bishop so that's why here uh, the this d5 move doesn't bring uh, white so much and uh, the funny thing is that anatoly karpov which is sort of a uh, positional player and static player is trying to keep a dynamic game but on the other hand the Gary Kasparov the dynamic player uh, tries to have a static game here so uh, here after queen on d2 we have knight on e d7 as mentioned we have rook on c1 uh, d1 will you see white is trying to keep the position in the center dynamic uh, which is uh, very important uh, he doesn't want to uh, have a this clarification uh, in the center by taking the pawn or advancing the pawn so as said when we have the peace activity we uh, w uh, the player that has the peace activity wants to stay with this dynamic position the uh, on the other hand the, the other player is trying to release the pressure in the center so uh, here uh, after rook on d1 uh, a6 was played by Gary Kasparov trying again to attack the center with potential b5 moves and now we have uh, d takes uh, d takes e5 uh, here knight takes on e5 was played by Gary Kasparov and now b3 protecting the c4 pawn and now b5 very powerful move by Gary uh, we have uh, c takes b5 a takes b5 uh, queen on d6 and now knight on d7 you see although black is a pawn down but now we have accomplished at least we have released the pressure here uh, it's not a dynamic position so much anymore and uh, still uh, white has some developing problems uh, the queen is now a little bit endangered and we have also possibilities to push the pawn on b4 and attack this a2 pawn so we have now an open file at least we have some um, we have some other strategic elements to, okay we're pulled down but i think it's perfectly playable here for for god f4 was played now b4 uh counter attack by gary knight on uh, b1 we have knight on uh, g4 of course attacks the bishop on e3 we have bishop on d4 bishop takes queen takes on d4 and now rook takes on a2 we have uh, uh, h3 and now c5 again counter attack uh, here queen on, on g1 and now knight on uh, knight on f6 we have e5 knight on uh, uh, knight on e4 here uh, h4 uh, we have c, uh, c4 very nice pawn breakthrough so you see uh, now uh, the dynamics has really changed because now Gary Kasparov loves the, the dynamic game because he realized that uh, here you see black white pieces are really paralyzed white pieces are not active so that's why uh, he loves now the position to get opened he wants now to create dynamics to get the position open because he has really a better peace activity so the rook is very powerful the knight is very well centralized we have possibilities to place our queen some somewhere active bishop on b7 and many many ideas so knight on c1 was played here very nice move by gary kasparov c3 queen, knight takes on a2 and now c uh, c2 we have uh, queen on d4 we have uh, promotion here uh, rook takes on uh, uh king takes the, the pawn on d1 we have now knight on uh, c5 now we see queen on d1 uh, d8 rook takes on d8 uh, and now after king on c2 we have knight on f2 and in this position uh, anatoly karpov resigned because if you retreat with the rook bishop on f5 is very dangerous and it's also even forced checkmate here so as mentioned uh, you should always follow uh, this basic rule of dynamic games when we have dynamics played with the pieces towards the center or attack the center you see how important that was when you feel that you have a better piece activity then of course you want to have the uh, the, uh, the dynamics when you feel that it's not so good the dynamic uh, position doesn't fit for you try to change the dynamics of the game try to have a static position and then maybe play much more active with your own pieces okay i hope you realize these ideas and i hope you that you enjoyed this video meanwhile you can watch my other basics in chess videos with some other opening principles middle game strategies and the end game strategies and you can also watch my chess tactics and chess puzzles videos in which i show you all of the possible tactical motifs that can happen in a chess game and you can also subscribe to my channel if you like this content 
Thanks you for watching, guys. Um, chess is the best, of course.